Welcome to the Sand Pond Saga. Let's get started. The Sand Pond engine simulates little atoms, and it can handle quite a lot of them, but it does start to slow down when there are too many, especially on slower devices like my laptop and phone. Today, let's try to make a sand engine that's even bigger. And no cheating, we need to process every grain of sand, even if they aren't doing anything. Sleeping is banned. So join me as we make nine different sand engines, from the smallest to the biggest. Let's start with canvas sand. 60 times a second, the engine updates the world and then draws the world. It goes through every space, firing an event in each one. After all that, it goes through each space again, drawing a rectangle to represent each atom. This works great out of the box, and it lets us make a world that's 100 by 100 spaces big, 10,000 atoms. But if we go any bigger, it starts to slow down. By measuring its performance, we can see that it takes a long time to draw the world. This means, to speed things up, we need to improve drawing speed. Let's try that with lazy sand. Instead of redrawing the entire world each frame, let's only draw spaces that need changing. This lets us make a bigger world that's 200 by 200 spaces big, 40,000 atoms. But if we go bigger, it slows down. Drawing a rectangle is slow, and we draw a lot of rectangles. Let's try to fix that with path sand. Instead of drawing rectangles one by one, let's trace an outline around all of them. Then we can colour all of them in, in one go. This lets us make a world that's 300 by 300 spaces big, 90,000 atoms. Any bigger and we slow down. Our drawing functions are still too slow, we still need to speed them up. Let's try data sand. Let's ditch the slow rectangle filling functions. Instead. Let's manually edit the image data of the screen. We can tweak the colour values of individual pixels, which seems to work faster. With this method, we can get a world that's 500 by 500 spaces big, 250,000 atoms. If we go bigger, it slows down. We're getting quicker at drawing, but it's still the main thing holding us back for now. Let's improve drawing speed with invisible sand. Instead of editing the red, green, blue and alpha values of pixels, let's only edit the alpha value, which controls how transparent the pixel is. This saves us time and increases drawing speed, letting us get a world that's 1000 by 1000 spaces big, 1 million atoms. Finally, we can draw atoms quickly. If we go any bigger, we're now limited by how fast we can process each atom's behaviour. We now need to improve updating speed. Let's try that with neighbour sand. So, every time a sand atom behaves, it has to work out where its neighbours are, which is very slow. To avoid this, Let's make each atom find its neighbours when the page loads. And more importantly, remember where they are so it doesn't have to repeat this again and again. This lets us make a world that's 1500 by 1500 spaces big, over 2 million atoms. But if we go bigger, our updating speed still slows us down. Let's help that with WebAssembly sand. Let's delete 
all our JavaScript code and rewrite the whole thing in C. We can compile this into WebAssembly, which seems to run faster. This lets us get a world that's 2000 by 2000 spaces big, 4 million atoms. Any bigger though, and we still slow down because of updating speed. How about GPU sand? Again, let's delete all our code and rewrite the whole engine in WebGL. This means we can compute the behavior of atoms on my graphics card, which works quite differently. Instead of going through each atom one at a time, we can now update many different atoms at the same time. This speeds up the engine a lot, and we can make a world that's 3000 by 3000 spaces big, 9 million atoms. But going bigger always seems to result in a slower or less robust engine. At the end of the day, there's only so much my desktop or laptop or phone can do by themselves. What if we could somehow break free from the hardware limitations of these devices? Let's try that with tile sand. We'll get my three devices to team up and combine their efforts. They connect to each other wirelessly on separate local servers, and this lets them pass sand around between them. My phone, at the top, runs an engine written in JavaScript. It sends sand down to my desktop, which uses its graphics card to process sand. Then the sand falls down to my laptop, which uses a WebAssembly engine. This connected world is a combination of 1,500 by 1,500, and 3,000 by 3,000, and 1,500 by 1,500. 13 and a half million atoms. Now, in theory, you could connect even more devices together to make an even bigger world. This is as close as I can get to something that's indefinitely scalable without using specialist computers like the T2 tile, which can truly be as big as you want. If you want to make the world's biggest sand engine, I suggest you use that. But that's for another day. I hope you enjoyed discovering these different ways of making a lot of sand. My next video topic will be decided by my patrons. If you want to vote, please join the Secret Club of Froggy Heroes. As a member, you also hugely support the channel and get juicy froggy content before anyone else. Thank you so much to all my current members. I really appreciate it. And thank you for watching this video today. Hopefully, I'll see you next time.